Well, folks, welcome aboard Leading Your Best Life. Lee Farnell here. And this morning, I'm talking with a guy that's been in and around money for many, many years. And I want to delve down and talk about what he's learned over the years and particularly helping others, knowing that he's got a business called Wealth by Design. Very important topic. So, Jeff Bowman, welcome to Leading Your Best Life. Thank you, Lee. And uh, thank you for the kind invitation. My pleasure. Well, I think when you've known each other off and on in some ways in and around the Perth business community for a long time, and then you came to our Lifter meeting uh, a month or two ago, and we got talking, and we had a coffee last week delving down even more into the very interesting businesses uh, you're involved in. Um, but before we start talking about money, let's talk firstly about you. Jeff, uh, what's been the Jeff Bowman story? Where where have you evolved from? Okay. Um, so born... Uh... Born in uh, on a farm of uh, south of Colac in um, in Victoria, mm-hmm. and the family moved to New South Wales, and we were farmers in the Riverina, um, uh, good old Geelong Football Club uh, catchment area, and um, and then uh, about twelve, I was shipped off to a boarding school back in Geelong, and uh, the farm wasn't big enough, so I headed off uh, west and um, did a bit of travelling, and uh, and then set up uh, set up in the west here with a property developer. Um, back in the late seventies, and um, worked for him about ten years. Uh, we built the garden office park outside, uh, just on the other side of Bar- Barber Gallows there, and did mm-hmm. some interesting things. Uh, but then I uh, switched to a career change and took out a Prudential Life Insurance Agency uh, back in October '89. Remember it quite well. The Prudential and man, the man the from man Prudential. For, a man from Prudential. I couldn't find a bowler hat, but. Um, we definitely there were the men from Prudential, and then in 1995, we uh, a group of the Prudential guys decided to set up the first f- sort of fee for service financial planning business called WB Financial uh, in 1995, and then we worked that through um, for um, up until 2013. We had about 22 businesses and uh, about 50 advisors, um, and then uh, reverted back to we all went our own separate ways. Um, we had a couple of uh, attend um, for various reasons, and then we just went to our own devices, our own independent businesses, and I just continued with mine here in Subiaco until uh, till February two year, two years ago, and I sold it to a group in Osborne Park. Fantastic. So hmm. you've had a lot of experience in not only in and around helping people with money, but uh, in terms of your own business, obviously getting to the point where what twenty two businesses, fifty advisors. So that's that's a lot of people, the, the management and leadership and systems and cash flow and marketing and all of those things that you've you've learned there. So um, in terms of your own leading your best life, um, uh, what, what are some tips you've learned over the years uh, in terms of both helping yourself lead a healthy or wealthy life um, or even, even worse, people you've seen where you've gone, mate, they are making so many mistakes. What are some? Let's start with that. Some of the pitfalls and potholes you've seen people go down, be it in business or with money over the years. Okay, look, um, very good question, Lee. I think uh, one of the biggest problems with with money management um, is financial literacy. Mm-hmm. Um we don't even know anyone that watches the ABC knows the Alan Kohler program sort of level of the mentality of a 15 year old. Um, and uh, largely it's a lack of education. Um, but one of the great pitfalls is, is ignorance and greed. Mm. It's, a, it's a lethal cocktail. And, mm. um, and uh, we used to see a lot of that and we still see, see it today. <laughs> we saw evidence of that in the 80s when the tax schemes were prevalent. Um, uh, um, managed managed investment schemes, they were called. And, um, you know, you could invest in, um, you know, pine trees and yabby farms and mm. uh, Yehovah plantations and so forth and so on. Um, and there were, that was a, that was a great introduction to me of the, the lack of, um, the lack of, knowledge and the deception in the market too because mm. the promoters of those schemes primarily accountants mm. although the financial planners cop most of the uh, blame for it we never entered into any of them um 
uh, mainly because they never they never passed the sniff test uh, for us. Oh boy, uh, the sniff test. I like that test. <laughs> yeah, no, we, uh, you know, you had you could make a a five thousand dollar deposit and get a fifty thousand dollar tax deduction on a non recourse loan. You never had to pay back. Things mm. like that, and mm. it was just never it never made sense. Uh, and they all came undone pretty yes. well. Nearly all of them, sort of ninety nine percent of them. Mm. So that was a sort of a really good intro to the mentality of people. Um, we deal with a lot of very smart people, but um, uh, they were very good engineers or doctors or crane drivers or didn't matter. They were very, very good at what they did. But when it came to just understand the, the, the very basic fundamentals uh, of how super works, how compound interest works, um, uh, how diversification of assets work, uh, why you don't go into something for a tax deduction primarily. You only go into something that if it's going to make you money and if you get a tax deduction as a secondary benefit, then fabulous. Uh, but all those tax schemes were driven primarily by people wanting a tax deduction without any uh, knowledge of whether the business venture would be successful or not. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so that's sort of... Um, uh, a, a bit of our past. I mean, we've we started the business uh, running seminars and and workshops in in schools and in, in uh, mining towns uh, wow. back um, you know back uh, in the in the late nineties. Uh, Tom Price and Col Colgooley and Kananara and Darn. We travelled all over the place just running seminars and workshops, and that's really how we built the built the client base up for. The financial planning business because we didn't um, we never bought a client we sold them all in the end but we never bought a client my beautiful let me go to what you're doing now in fact two things i'm going to share um performance development consultants i've spoken to you about that part of what we do at pdc is to say we also want to be helping people in terms of money and wealth creation and i see you being central to that Certainly this whole principle of, as you probably told hundreds of people, you know, failing to plan financially is certainly uh, planning to fail. In fact, you might have even said that to me the other day. <laughs> um, and Every so, chance. you know, uh, and it, so the, this money area, as you say, that you've been helping people with both bookkeeping, uh, investments, there's people in our, my, our network of over 50 different consultants. And I, I wanted to make sure that I've had clients where we've helped them increase their sales. And they said, well, Lee, now we've got all this money. What do we do with it? And I go, well, I'm not the expert in this area, but I do know people who are. So there's a whole section there on our performance development website uh, where I will then refer people like yourself to um, helping uh, clients in business. But let talk talk to us about Wealth by Design. I see this, educating and supporting the next generation of wealth accumulators. Talk to me about this. Okay. So when I sold the business, I I had it in my licence. I'm no longer a licensed financial planner. And we make it very clear uh, to anyone that's interested in this subject that we uh, are fabulous on the education and the training. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're very well connected with all the specialists mm. that many people will need to be linked or receiving services from uh, during their uh, journey towards financial independence. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, most people in the street, if you ask them the question, they want to pay off their debts, educate their kids, uh, have enough money in retirement uh, in super or non-super assets uh, so that they can uh, live happily ever after and, yeah. uh, and maintain their health along the way. And that's pretty well everybody um, that thinks about the subject. So what I've done, uh, we we had 25 years of referring referring work to specialists outside our own area of speciality because a, a strategic-based financial advisor is not an accountant, but they understand enough to know um, that you do need a decent accountant. Yep. It might be a corporate accountant. It might be a, a specialist in tax or, or in, in salary packaging areas or what, or whatever. So we would direct those, um, those coach, those individuals those that yeah. we were dealing with to the appropriate people. Mm. 
Mm. And it'd be lawyers, finance brokers, um, uh, uh, HR managers. So there's a range of people that we now, under this brand, still continue to do the same. Yeah. Um, and uh, but there's also some. Um, so the, I, I, there's two or three key services that we manage ourselves. Um, one of them you're looking at there, the digital wealth area. Yes. Uh, since the US government have approved uh, and legalized Bitcoin as a legitimate storage of wealth um, and now issued up to 13 ETFs, Bitcoin ETFs, exchange traded funds. Mm -hmm. And you've got Vanguard and BlackRock and these guys, these major, major corporations that control so much of people's wealth globally on their various platforms. Yes. There's a legitimacy aspect to this growth area. And so we've been learning as much as we can for the last four or five years studying this area. What's a tokenized asset? Well, a tokenized asset is it could be gold, but it's now a digital gold backed by real gold in a vault, in this case, ABC bullion. Um, but it's uh, it's sitting on a blockchain and it's a, a digital form. And if you had a thousand dollars worth of gold on these modern platforms, then you've got a thousand dollars worth of gold in a, in a vault backed one to one. So it's the same as having the real thing, but you don't, you've got real benefits now with liquidity, no storage costs, et cetera, et cetera. So Jeff, this digital asset space is like the new frontier. So many people don't know very much about it at all. And you've talked before about passing the sniff test and, you know, uh, financial literacy and so the whole area of financial literacy in this digital asset space it, it really does need some help so what are you guys doing in that area and what what is it that of course the financial planning industry as i think you've touched on um are not quite able to do that so give us some info there yeah sure um it's quite uniquely it's sort of um it's an unregulated uh, investment area all the regulators all around the world are, are, are grappling with it um and it's just this crossover. This ASIC are trying to work out what sort of rules and regulations to put in place. But you've got this um, this industry booming along. It's got a market cap of you know, about two and a half trillion. Good. <laughs> and and uh, and of course the financial advisors are terribly frustrated because they can't give advice. It's illegal for them to give advice uh, on a product that's not an approved product under their licensing arrangements. Mm. Uh, but of course, we as no, we now as non-financial advisors, just average Joe blows, we can actually legally discuss it. Can't give advice because it's not a security, but we can give education and training and provide conduits to all the research and the information because it's there. Um, and so and it's quite an exciting area because it is a genuine fifth asset class that's emerging. Um, the very wealthy who don't need to access financial advisors uh, in the retail space, they're already onto it mm. and, and and getting access to quality information. Uh, and, you know, these are the whole paradigm shift is a bit different because in many cases the risk is lower, but the returns are higher, which is a bit odd. You've um, touched on some of the returns have been quite uh, astronomical, oh, yes. haven't they? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the uh, there's a billion-dollar... Um, uh, market cap uh, businesses, uh, crypto businesses, tokenized asset businesses. Um, a lot of crypto businesses are really software companies, which a lot of people really don't appreciate. Mm. Um, and once you understand what they do uh, and their use case, there's been um, returns in excess of 100% per year that people are enjoying to diversify their uh, their their asset allocation in their in their wealth accumulation strategies. Uh, but they're very rare, those people, because they just don't know where to get the advice. Uh, but not advice, education and training. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mate, it's just amazing. And as you say, we come back to the whole idea of financial literacy and the super wealthy who already have the financial literacy are involved in this fifth asset area, as you say, uh, yes. and getting the, we the wealthy are getting wealthy. But what you're doing is providing the education to increase financial literacy to give people exposure to this area that they know 
and so I know little or nothing about it. when you hear the word crypto, you go, oh, hang on, that just sounds like, you know, all hot air. But again, you talked to me once before about the sniff test. So you're saying that there's plenty enough of research to show that this does pass the sniff test. Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, uh, you just got to know where to get the information and then you can do your own research once you've provided the, the access to the research. Um, yeah, anyone can, most people can read, you know, and they can mm. work out uh, a use case is very simple. I mean, there's one of those um, just commonly referred to crypto assets. Um, it's called Ripple. Um, uh, and you go, well, what's that? Well, you know, it's got a multi-billion dollar market cap. Um, it turns over you know, tens of tens of millions every 24 hours. Goodness gracious. Uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, but what does it do? Well, it's a it's basically a, a a software program that helps all the banks around the world convert their fiat currencies into the various cryptocurrencies. That's what it does. Goodness gracious! And when you, when you understand what it does, you go, oh, okay, that's fine. It's software. You know, I know what Microsoft does. You know, in my international share portfolio, Microsoft shares, and so. It is a, um, it, uh, it is a, and you've got the US government, of course, that have um, now formally uh, sanctioned Bitcoin uh, for uh, the big fund managers to put in their applications for exchange traded funds. So, Bitcoin exchange traded funds. You, financial planners for years have been uh, using uh, ETFs, they're called. You could have got a gold ETF or you could have a sector in the, in, in, you know, in the equity area, ETFs. Well, now there's a gold ETF, legitimate US government sanctioned asset class. And um, uh, and that's only, that's only really happened in the last uh, six weeks. Goodness like gracious. It's, yes, it's very, very new. And, and you, what's a tokenized asset? Well, um, uh, gold, you know, we would have uh, many of our uh, self-managed super fund clients have some gold or platinum or silver in their portfolio, but that was physical gold, silver or platinum. They would have, we, we use the Perth Mint. And, um, and uh, but now of course, on these new digital platforms, um, they, you can have a thousand dollars worth of gold tokens. Uh, and, but it's like an ETF because it's backed one to one with $1,000 worth of unallocated bullion that's held on the ABC bullion uh, vaults, which is a, a, a Sydney-based company. Um, and that is exactly the same as having gold at the Perth Mint, but it's fractionalised. So you can, you know, these uh, these um, digital assets will go up to a maximum of, of eight zeros after the decimal point. Which and so, nice. yeah, yeah. So, you know, you could have $20 worth of gold or $100 worth of gold um, no storage costs. It's fully insured with a, with a, a custody insurer, um, just like a normal wealth portfolio. So you never have to worry about your assets being hacked because if they are, they're fully insured. You pay for it, but uh, in the uh, you know in the assets under management fee that these platforms charge. Um, but it's fully insured. It's fully liquid. Um, it's it's live gold exchange. It's matched with the gold price, the global gold price. Um, you can go on check whatever currency that you want to deal with it in, and um, and buy it and sell it. But it's a uh, so it's just it's a uh, it's just a brand new world. And once again, it's just trying to build the education um, around a new area, mm. uh, reduce the knowledge gap. You know. It's, it's, mm. What we which do. is which is part of your mission, as you say, reducing the knowledge gap. As you're talking, I'm sitting here going, there's an old saying that says, what you don't know won't hurt you. But in fact, when it comes to money, what you don't know not only will hurt you, but it will cost you in lost opportunity, won't it? And so here you are, yes. and I'm hearing the concept, besides we talk about financial literacy and improving someone's financial IQ, but we're talking about financial empowerment. We're giving people access to knowledge and wealth creation systems that in the past only the super wealthy have been able to know about. So you really are mm. democratising 
uh, wealth creation and talk about wealth wealth by design. So, mate, well well done. Good work. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's good fun um, doing what we're doing and uh, we're adding a lot of value and uh, it's great to get the message out there. Mm-hmm. So that's one area. Another area uh, that we're strong on uh, uh, and, and on the services side, uh, if you go right to the top of the screen uh, there, Lee, and you'll find services, and they're all summarised in blue yeah. line there. So on the top left-hand corner, we still think financial planning is such a critical area for so many mm. people, mm. but we're not financial advisors. But we mm. now, I've got to know all the good financial advisors, or most of them, and so I will, uh, we run a consultancy service where it's an education and training session to basically add the building blocks of knowledge in for people. Yeah. That's just a two-hour consult. Yeah. And after that, we're in a position to place people with the professionals that we believe they need to go and talk to. Based and, on the needs analysis you've done in the two-hour consult. Yeah, totally, yeah. And they might not need a financial planner. They might need to restructure their finance based on my experience. So I'll introduce them to a finance broker. They may well absolutely need to go and see a financial advisor and they just needed the confidence to go in and talk to a financial advisor knowing the things that they actually needed um, because some of these people have been a chap in the other day who's 39 year old single male just raised five million dollars on a 40 million cap valuation for his company um, and said look you know all my mates have got properties and shares and seem to be doing better than i am i've got a good business and i've got a good salary but i've spent the last sort of 15 years building up the business Mm. Um, I've got no planning at all with my personal wealth Mm. Um, and uh, I don't know where to start. And so uh, very successful software development guy, um, but knew nothing about the fundamentals of investing in, he didn't even know what the the, the four key asset classes were. Yeah. Uh, You know, um, uh, so, so, uh, so it's that's really the world I operate in now. Um, I had a fellow the other day with a, a, a seven hundred million market cap ASX listed business, and uh, he went to my he went to my LinkedIn site actually, and uh, and uh, it says that we we can help people uh, that have got HR issues, and so we've got HR contractors that we we ended up referring one to this uh, fellow, and he was over the moon. He only had twenty employees, but. He hadn't had, there was no workplace agreements in place. There was no proper structure for a business mm. that had a 700 million market cap. It was quite amazing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. I see here, crowdfund your next project or venture. So you, you're going to yes. help in that area also. Yeah, totally, totally. There's a, this is a business that uh, some of our, a number of our investors have invested in. Um, and crowdfunding is a, a very large fragmented industry. Um, which is, um, you know, it's about thirty-five percent of the crowdfunding businesses are in the U- are in the Europe or the UK, and the, the other, about twenty-five percent in the states, and the rest are scattered throughout Asia. And there's a couple here in Australia, mm-hmm. um, but this is a technology platform um, that um, will allow all of those um, ind- in- independent businesses. Involved in a multi-billion-dollar industry, crowdfunding mm. industry, mm. to join onto one platform. So investors in uh, dealing with a crowdfunder in London can now access investors here in Perth or in Brazil on this platform. Fantastic. Uh, so there's a, you know, there's a. Uh, so I sort of pick and choose the things I like to get involved in because I've got the flexibility now. Oh, you, as you say, you've been around. I'm a bit like myself. We've been around a long time now, so we have. We have uh, networks of people, uh, not the least of which, in my case, in in terms of um, PDC, was people saying, Lee, you, you train salespeople, but do you know any good people that we can hire? And I go, well, I can't. I'm not in the recruiting business. Not only that, I'm not in the business of re- poaching salespeople from one client to another, but I can put you in touch with a fellow who's very, very, very good at recruiting rainmakers. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and so I, I'll put you in touch with him. And then... You know, there are areas that I don't do 
a lot. I go, well, hang on. Well, not the least of which, one of the other. I'm very big these days in the area of the whole idea of when we want to change an organisation, um, then let's, no matter where someone is on the on the journey from starting to selling, we've got people who can help them at every step of the way. And obviously here in terms of money, uh, you're, you're one of them. Uh, but the other, the other side of it, and here's just some examples, but on the other side of it, I talk about um, when we're working with with organisations and want, want them to change, we have this model here we talk about um, organisational energetics. Both We want to change systems and structures, but we want to grow the people in terms of their thinking and their systems, but always in and around results and key performance indicators. So, so we've got a big network of people, but as but but again, coming back to the journey, people get to the point business is going well, I'm making good money. And as you've already said there, this financial literacy area, person can be a great engineer or doctor or architect or a land developer, even. Um, but at the same time, there's there's a whole lot of things that you know that 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 they they don't know. And of course, what do they say? What you don't know can actually hurt you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we um, like fifty percent of marriages fail, and so you've got uh, blended families now, and there's quite critical pieces of knowledge that these people must understand um, uh, when they're reinvesting into a property. There's generally inequity with one partner's got more money than the other, so you can discuss things like joint tenant joint tenants or tenants in common with property ownership, so they actually understand it estate planning there's a massive void in that area there always has been um 40 percent of australians don't have a will uh it's quite amazing they don't have enduring powers of attorney they don't know what a testamentary trust is for income splitting with children from a deceased estate um that's a massive area that we're continuing on with as non-financial advisors as we did with being financial advisors we never did the estate planning we'd refer them to an estate planning lawyer yeah um, You've, you've, you've got your cursor on the novated leasing thing there. Yes, I uh, see that there. That, that, that's right. Between the t total and permanent and novated, these are other key areas. You Talk about that for a second because you told me yes. about this the other day. And it's quite incredible. Yes. Yeah, so we, by, sort of by default, really, um, were invited to tender for a contract with Rio Tinto back in 2002, a long time ago, um, for their uranium mine in the Northern Territory. They had about 450 employees. And it was to put in a salary packaging program. But, of course, salary packaging is, uh, when it comes to full FBT employers, is essentially about all about novated leasing of private motor vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's the primary reason that the novated leasing industry exists. And, and so we were fortunate to win that tender, um, and we had that contract for over 10 years, um, running financial literacy programs for all of their staff. We were teaching them how the Rio Tinto Super Fund worked and we ran workshops, seminars and one-on-one -on -one meetings for about 450 employees over the course of a decade. And what we learned very quickly um, was that we needed to put an advice package around the Novated Leasing product because it's actually a massive multi-billion dollar industry. Um, there's over 6,500 Novated leases signed up each month in Australia. Goodness. It's enormous industry, yes. I mean, the Macquarie loan book for novated leasing alone is about $3.4 um, Wow. And, and uh, but weirdly, that product is classed as an unregulated finance product, which basically means um, it's the opposite to regulated, you know, regulated loan for your home, everything's got to be explained. Uh, the interest rate's got to be explained. Uh, the fees, the charges, the commissions, the kickbacks, the brokers are getting, everything's fully, ex fully explained uh, for the purpose of consumer uh, protection and, uh, and uh, transparency. But the novated leasing industry is completely the antithesis of that. Uh, there's actually no legal or compliant requirement to disclose anything of material interest to the customer. <laughs> you are kidding me. No, no, and that's how it still is today. And there's um, and so what I did is went to three of the really good novated leasing businesses, 
um, they'd all operate under that same set of rules. But I said to them after, I was thinking of selling the financial planning business. I want to set up a Novated Leasing brokerage service in Australia. Be a national business. I'll run it out of Perth. Um, but I will, I'll find the clients, but I'll educate the employer and the employee. I'll, uh, you'll, uh, we'll talk about key issues like the term of the lease and what the interest rate is. We must disclose that because that's important part of disclosure and full transparency. Mm. Um, and then you guys can look after the client from that point on. We will be able to offer them other services, but you handle the payroll inter inter interface um, with the payroll department of the employer, you process all the payments, et cetera, et cetera. And so, so that's really the only, that we're the only broker in, the, in, the, in Australia that does that, uh, where if you come to us, we are fully independent um, outfit that actually work for you, the customer, not for the product provider, mm -hmm. which is a bit unique. And we love doing that because there's very few tax deductions available of any significance for Australian taxpayers now. And um, and where a novated lease is appropriate, in many cases it is, uh, there's significant tax breaks between three to $10,000 a year of tax rebates on a, running your private motor car, not a business car, private motor car. Yes, and I think you showed me the brochure that showed there was benefits there are even more benefits if you chose an elect, elect, uh, electric vehicle, EV. Yes, yeah, the, yes. The government, with the the, uh, the influence of the Greens, um, uh, have announced the most generous tax deductions for Australian employees that I've seen in thirty years. Um, mm, brilliant. Yeah, you, know, you can get forty thousand dollars worth of tax rebates back on a fifty thousand dollar electric car. It's quite wow. Amazing. Wow, yeah. amazing, amazing. So, Jeff, who can get access to this novated leasing and get access to the benefits of novated leasing? Yeah, look, great question, Lee. Um, firstly, no one can get access to this benefit unless an employer is prepared, prepared to offer it as a benefit. Mm -hmm. And it's principally been the privilege of the public servants and the big corporates that have been prepared to offer this as a benefit for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the beauty of what we've done with our... Novated Leasing Brokerage, which is a fully independent national uh, brokerage company in the Novated Leasing space, is that we've been able to work with our platform partners and offer this to any business, no matter how small. So we can deal with a, a mum and dad business now, as long as they're an employee of their own company and they're in receipt of pay slips, um, they can get access to the same fleet discount benefits and the same uh, education and training around uh, this ATO approved tax product uh, that uh, you can if you're a half a million dollar executive with Woodside. And so that's the bit the big difference that we've made here. We've sort of made it, made it really available to the, the small to medium business sector uh, who have been excluded from this market for 20 years. Fantastic. All right. So if you're an employee of your own business, whether it be, as you say, mum and dad business or two or five or 10 employees, small, medium business, you can now get access. Absolutely. Uh, only through NCLO. So uh, nclo.com.au is the is our outfit. And as soon as they come through our, our website, uh, they get into the system and, and they're, they're, they've been, they, get, they get all the help that they need and the guidance on how to, on how to set it up. Mm. Fantastic. Good news. Good um, news. And it's not like, as you say, uh, the 80s, as I said, you're reminding me of one of my clients who got involved in some movie deal uh, and eventually <laughs> uh, the tax department wanted something like tens of millions of dollars back pay. He's going, what the hell? This was all legal and it was changed retrospectively. And I mean, as you said, many many a person would have just jumped off a building uh, with the, 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 the bill that he got, um, but he kind of worked his way through it. Um, so it would have been very, very stressful for a lot of people who who thought that they were doing the right thing because they were getting advice from professionals or what yes. they thought were professionals. But I, I like your point, the sniff chest. And and look, a mate of mine literally is a doctor that set up a financial planning business for doctors because he said, you know, doctors, being as intelligent as they are in terms of medicine and all the things that they do, caring for people, but he said financially it's very easy for a cowboy to take the doctors for a ride. And I'm sure over the years um, that happened with, you know, farms or a whole range of things 
Yes. Um, so uh, getting the right advice from someone you can actually trust um, where you can uh, maybe teach people what the sniff test actually looks like. You know, people can sniff a lot of things, but they may not be able to sniff a good deal or a bad deal <laughs> because, because, and again, I, I mean, you know, Robert Kiyosaki has been a mentor and a friend of mine since the 90s. And of course, he's got the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad and the work of Buckminster Fuller and others um, where, you know, he, 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 he talks about financial literacy, financial, you know, financial dumbness in a way because, and and in fact, he, he says, you know, the banks don't want you to be too financially literate because then you'll start asking questions. Um, so what, what are your comments about that? Obviously, you deal with banks. You might want to be a bit careful, but um, this whole area of, I mean, there's been a little bit more financial education in the the school ed, school curriculum, but really, if I go through all, certainly, you know, that one, the sixties and the seventies, um, but even today, there's only I mean, there wouldn't be a lot of schools that would be teaching uh, kids about money and financial literacy, would no. there? No, there's not. No, there, it, and it's extraordinary that it, that that it's not the, 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 that is the case. Mm. It's hard to know why. Um, um, it's a stacked system against people that. Are not knowledgeable in my mm. view mm. um uh the banks uh in my view uh were responsible for causing the royal commission um which royal they, commission was that the last royal commission into the financial services sector all oh, right yes yes um and uh completely culpable with how they um were never strategic based planners they were always product and transaction based planners so yeah yeah yep. yeah their whole remuneration system was all about how you know how do you want fries with that you know mm -hmm. <laughs> do you want an extra loan with that mm -hmm. and oh yeah no no they're i, I think they're completely culpable um yep. and and will and largely got off scot free and so the tpd area there lee is an important one um total and permanent disability yes. claim um, on my LinkedIn site, I, I basically say that we're very strong on on bridging the knowledge gap in a lot of areas. Um, and the digital asset world is one, but in the insurance claims area is another one. There's yep. thirteen. There's about seventeen thousand. Um, uh, TPD claims each year in Australia. Not a lot. Average payout's about 150 grand. Um, but it's fair to say that I've got a full-time claims manager and uh, at least 90% of the claims that we handle on behalf of clients um, are for clients that did not know that they had a claim in the first place. Wow. Yeah, and especially with mental health. Mm. And so... And some people, many don't even know that they've got the insurance cover at all because it's default insurance cover that's set up in their employer super super funds. Ah. And they never they never had to apply for it and fill out a whole bunch of medical questions and apply for it. It's just default cover. And so it's generally friends and connections within our net, own network that refer these people to us because they just have heard about what we do. Um, and and we charge a flat fee. Uh, we negotiate a flat fee, and it's a success only fee. Uh, we, so we do all the work up front. So you only get paid if the claim is if the claim successful. Is paid out. So there's Correct. no risk for the person. No risk for the person. Mm -hmm. um, we do all the initial assessments. Uh, we read the documents. We confirm the definition of disability because it can vary. Um, um, but once again, there's a lot of misinformation in this industry. Um, mm. The last uh, claim we did was for a, a, an MND uh, sufferer, motor neurons disease. And uh, mm. when they first went to the insurance company, before they were referred to us, the insurance company, um, due to bad training of the people on the front desk, really, um, sent, the, sent the MND sufferer total and permanent disability paperwork because uh, the girl said, oh, you'll need the TPD paperwork. Um, we'll send it out to you, um, which is a terribly, it's just a terrible mistake to make mm. because uh, MND is a death sentence, as we know. Mm. And as long as you're specialists and you're a doctor, your GP, 
prepared to say that you'll have a life expectancy of less than two years. You qualify for terminal illness payout, mm. um, which is your death cover paid out in advance. Now, death cover doesn't attract any tax, okay, wow. if it's inside super, but TPD does. Oh, goodness gracious, what a massive difference that is. Yeah, yeah. So you can have up to 22% tax um, on a TPD payout. So we inter we sort of intervened early enough to stop that going ahead. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, it's a big area. Only sadly for the financial planning industry, it's not a good on their reputation, but only 10% of financial advisors ever help their clients with an um, insurance claim. They just wow. leave them to deal directly with the insurance companies, which is an appalling indictment on the industry. Um, uh, we were one of the 10 percenters, of course, that always handed our claims in-house in our planning business. Uh, and it's a, simply a separate service that we continue to offer today um, because it's an enormous need for it. Right. Mm. Right. Absolutely fantastic. So it's great work, the work you're doing there, Jeff, uh, and uh, such a, a huge range of things available to you. Um, let's talk a bit about you uh, and delve down a little bit for a second. So what what motivates Jeff Bowman? You know, why why aren't you on a boat somewhere fishing and not bothering to work? What motivates you and why? Okay. Well, I, I've got to the point where I do blend up my, my leisure time uh, with my work time. Uh, I'll take more time off now. Uh, but I still think this, uh, to answer your question, I think there's unfinished business um, for me. Mm -hmm. uh, in all, in certainly in those three key areas that that um, that I enjoy working in, um, uh, but bridging the knowledge gap and 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 being responsible for uh, a major you know, major improvements in people's lives uh, is um is an enormous motivator. Uh, 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 we I sponsor a medical conference in Japan each year. Um, which is good fun. I enjoy skiing. I still ski. I'm still in, I'm still fit enough to to ski every year. Um, Fantastic. And uh, so I fit. I'd fit more of that in, and I probably will soon ish. Um, uh, because um, you know, there's a uh, there's only Hotham and and Nisiko really where I ski. I've skied in the states a few times, and I've skied in Europe a few times. But I could do I could do more of that. Um. I've tied up with one of the local surf clubs down here, the Cottesloe Surf Club. Um, uh, I'm, I'm involved down there a bit. Uh, I'm a Jean football supporter, so uh, I spend a, a fair amount of my time in Melbourne during the during the winter months. <laughs> I notice we've only got one game over here this year um, in in Perth. Uh, so yeah, so a combination of uh, maintaining fitness because uh, you know I'm into I'm into my sixties, so. Mm. Plenty of my mates and other people, or certainly clients of mine, have come to grief, um, uh, you know, sort of earlier than they should have. So I'm conscious of that. Um, but um, it's it's all in balance, really. Uh, Absolutely. I'm a grandparent now, so that's great. I enjoy doing taking time off to help out in that area. So, so just on that, just on that. So what what are some of your routines from a, a day to a week in terms of? Uh, looking after yourself in terms of mind, body, spirit, fitness, health. Well, I'm sort of three days a week at uh, at the surf club gym gymnasium. Mm -hmm. um, I'm involved with other sixty pluses that uh, have got a particular type of stretching exercise routine that we do uh, three days a week. So six days a week I exercise. Fantastic. Um, um, and and then it's a fairly vigorous. It probably at my age, I shouldn't go as hard as I do on the snow slopes, but um, uh, that's, that's a it's a good workout. But you know, it's uh, it's hardly consistent. It's twice at all, maybe three times a sure, year. Sure, it's really your training. As it, look, my, my background's physical education. I remember Dr. Willie, head of phys ed at Melbourne Uni, said, you know, get fit to play. Don't play to get fit. You know, people yeah. are going and playing squash, playing a competitive game, saying I'm doing that for my fitness. No, you need do the preparation work and the fitness work and then be fit enough to play, as you say, yeah. this, to be fit enough to to ski. Let's talk a bit about, we say, if you are what you eat, take great care and what you feed your brain. So in terms of books or information sources, are you a listener of podcasts? Are you a reader of books? Are you a combination of both? 
a combination of both. Okay. Combination of both. Yeah, yeah, combination of both. Um, uh, podcasts um, uh, and audio, audio books. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, where I, you know, try and spend a bit of time. I could do, I'd like to organise more time to listen to more podcasts because they're a fabulous uh, medium. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and, What's something um, you've listened to recently or a book that's by your bed that you're reading at the moment? Something that's stimulating uh, and you're learning from well, right now? Um, I'm nearly. Uh, I'm right into uh, a Clive Hamilton book at the moment uh, called The Hidden Hand. Okay. Um, What's that uh, about? Uh, it's it's about Mao Zedong's plan thirty years ago to um, take over the world without firing a bullet. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, and uh, um, so that's sort of. Uh, uh, that's uh, something, but I, I was in Tasmania a few weeks ago, and uh, and uh, I'm brushing up on my history on uh, on the penal colonies and uh, what was going on over there in Sarah Island, uh, mm. up the northwest of Tassie. That was quite interesting because it was a um, a, a old book written on Sarah Island, and it was the uh, the place that uh, the Brits would send the second offenders to, and uh, it was a cheap labour camp. For um, the hue and pine industry, right. So that's up in Strawn, is it? Is that near Strawn? That's it, yeah. exactly. Yes, yes. That co- how cold and desolate that was. Yes. Um, to even survive up there is amazing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They were very brutal times, and there were a few escapes because they made boats, and uh, a couple of the fellows managed to to uh, to uh, escape, and uh, and yeah, they took the wind trade winds all, all, all the way to Chile. From You're s- kidding me. For, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a major effort. They put the sail up and away they went. Wow, and, that's um, amazing. Yeah, so uh, they, uh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, so it was the next, it was the next bump to run into. Yes, of course. Because it was lo- lower than us, uh, lower than uh, South Africa. Mm. <laughs> let's talk, let's talk business. Let's talk business. Um, and uh, over the years, I mean, clearly, You've been involved in sales because you know and helping people and doing deals and still are. Tell me your training or mentoring, uh, the journey you've been on in terms of your own learning around sales. Give me give me some of the tips because clearly a person's got to run their own business. They need to understand. Um, and I imagine at Prudential there would have been some good training. But give me some of the training and the coaching you've had or or mentoring you've had that has really helped you develop your ability to to generate business, to sell? Look, I think the foundations were set, you know, in the very early days with um, American sort of trainers like like Leader Boys. He was one of our favourites, and I was introduced to him during those real estate days. Um, Zig Ziglar was a, a, a bit of a chatty um, motivator type, but Leader Boys was a fundamental... He fundamentally had a uh, an effect on on a lot of the on the tech sort of techniques and phraseologies that we would use mm-hmm. when we're negotiating uh, uh, or involved in the sales process, um, and a lot about getting people to more about listening to what people have got to say as opposed to you doing the talking, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but a skill of answering quit critical questions and getting people's permission mm. to to um, answer particular questions that you could design for people. Mm. Uh, so Lee, and he, um, he'd be dead now. Uh, and I think he was in his, in his sixties, 40 years ago. So mm. Mm. yeah. Mm. yeah. But Leader boys. Lee, Leader yeah. Lee, Lee, yeah. L-E, L-double-D, Lee, D, D, E, boys, B-O, B-O-I-S, French. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, but then there was, but we would go to, all the fund managers would have their own conferences um, that'd be the stars of all the, the 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 industry that you would go and listen to and you'd always pick up one or good, one or two good ideas at every, yes. at every conference. Yes. Um, we used to say, if you can just get one good idea that you can take back and put into place. Yes, uh, yes. Then it's been a good conference. 
let's talk mentoring so more hands-on coaching can you think of one or two people that have had a great influence on you as mentors to help you you know make decisions or develop skills or make you know better progress well one of our um founding directors in wealth but in in uh the WB Financial, a guy called Graham Meredith, um, uh, and I've got to be clear, I was not a, I was not a founding director of uh, WB Financial. I was just simply one of the original investors, and I was mm -hmm. one of the twenty-two businesses involved. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he, he was a, a, a mentor to me in many ways. I'd sit in, I'd sit in some of his presentations he would do with clients, and it's all about mapping out the journey with a lot of whiteboard work. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. um, a lot of our work was always centered around cash flow and goals and objectives. We would never talk about money mm -hmm. uh, because unless someone's happy with their lifestyle and they're clear on their goals and objectives, you're never going to get them to focus on anything for long enough to make a difference when it comes mm -hmm. to a financial wealth strategy. Um, and And being able to draw parallels between getting the foundation right for a house, um, uh, there's parallels there with your own life. And mm. he taught me all of that. Um, mm. Mm. You need the foundation. You need the foundations down first. You need to, uh, you know, you get the slab down and do all your plumbing work before uh, you can uh, put up the support walls and end up with a roof. And of course, in the financial planning world, um, it's, it's goals, objectives, understanding cash flow, um, estate planning, things like that. And from there you could. So Graham was probably one of the significant um, fellows in my early development days in the financial planning industry. That's brilliant, mate. As you say, a whole range of things you've just talked about there. One, using the whiteboard. I've seen this on other occasions in the financial planning world. Is One, we know... 60 to 70 percent or more of people operate and process information visually so when you can make it visual they understand it far better um yeah the power of the whiteboard we say compared to the power of powerpoint because you, the picture evolves and you can chunk it and work at a, a speed whereas powerpoint bang is visual bang 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 so there's real yes. power in the whiteboard or the flip chart but particularly the, the whiteboard and again there language around we're not just to talk money we talk goals and objectives and of course again we teach this with our own system that we use we call pomvic in terms of taking people from you know where are they now where do they want to be where's the gap now let's map now the fact that graham then used the metaphor uh, of building a house and as you say laying the foundations putting down the slab doing the plumbing or people get that because everyone Pretty much everyone knows and has had that experience. So you bring it into their reality. Whereas so often people, as I said, people talk about a whole range of other things, religion and sex more than they talk about money. It's, it's a taboo, ridiculous taboo. Well, certainly the funny thing is I think wealthy people tend to talk about money more. If I go to you know my mate's golf club or sailing club, there's a lot more talk of money, stocks, bonds, how you're doing. Uh, you know, how's he doing? Doing well. He's done this and he's made this investment. Whereas I'm sure you go in the pub when my old man was a, a, a was a motor mechanic. They talked about lack of money. They didn't talk about how do you get more money. It was mm -hmm. they talk about everything but how do you get more money. So so Graham Meredith clearly is a great um, a great whether now again in a lot of cases the mentor has learned from some other mentor and master. Yes. But to then pass it on to to you, there's so many great so many great tips there so let's just talk this mindset let's talk about mindset around scarcity and fear versus abundance and courage because clearly you would have come across people with a scarcity fear mindset around money and you would have mm -hmm. come across people with an abundance courage mindset do you, do you want to elaborate on that what that what that means for you when i mentioned that the scarcity and fear versus abundance courage mindset a lot of it is in the in the deep discussions right at the start of a relationship with someone mm -hmm. that wants to talk about uh getting their financial affairs in order and if they're familiar with scarcity because they're having trouble paying their bills 
or they've seen their parents suffer. Um, they're, they're very much uh, on the back foot and nervous and concerned about making a mistake. Mm. That, that in turn, though, um, can be a problem. If the sliding door moment um, goes wrong, because there are bad advisors, mm. bad account. There's every every profession has its dodgy elements, mm. and where someone has a serious lack of knowledge, they've got lack of confidence. Then they're 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 easily predated on by mm. the wrong people, mm. and. And you could have a very good advisor in the property industry or a very bad one. And um, and that's one of the biggest areas of concern that I've ever had for years because for a start, financial advisors essentially can't give advice on direct property, never have been able to. They can give advice on property trusts and, you know, um, listed entities. Mm. Uh, but if then... If the person has got a, uh, I've had someone, you might remember a guy called Henry Kay's in jail now, or he certainly would have served his time. Mm. But he was, the to, Gold, was it Gold Coast or Melbourne? Well, he used to run them all over Australia. We came yes. to the Gold Coast, most of the scams are. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> not, not that the Gold Coast colleagues that might agree with that statement, but mm. but he he was a he was an example of, you know. Uh, uh, an element that used to seduce a lot of people that were were so excited about getting ahead and buying six properties and selling three and clearing all the debt and retiring mm. financially independent people because they're getting all this rent from all these properties. Um, but, of course, most of these people paid $4,000 for two days of brainwashing at uh, Burswood. Mm. Uh, and then, and then uh, never did anything because mm. they had no idea really what they just signed up for. They were full of hype, full of hope, full of abundance, but no substance. Mm. Mm. And mm. so, um, so that's the that, that's the law of the jungle. Sadly, you've got um, predator behaviour. Mm. In, at, at, at every level and in the financial mm. services level it's it's a it's it's very evident mm. Mm. So, no, mm. i remember that guy from what i recall they were selling properties at over about market value on hype and there's all sorts of you know yeah. mucking around with pricing when the person yeah. went to go to sell it it was just like it was worth way 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 less than and it yeah. wasn't the economy it was the fact that they paid way too much in the first place yeah, they were being. There was deliberate extortion. Yeah, Contri absolutely planned extortion, playing on, preying, you know, on the naivety of mm. the average, you know, of the average character. So that average character has done the absolutely right thing. They've gone, we've got to get ahead in life. We've seen this big ad. We're going to go off. It's you know the first, the Thursday night's free. Oh, uh, well, the Friday night's free, uh, and then they, you know. They're highly polished sales teams mm, that mm, work mm. in that area. Mm. And, of course, all the money Henry McKay made was just out of selling, you know, 2,000 people on a weekend a $4,000 package. Mm. Well, that's a good number. Absolutely. You yeah. can make that happen. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, as you say, this whole area of financial literacy, which really has been Robert Kiyosaki's life and what you're doing so beautifully with, with, with Wealth by Design, um, why don't we want to be doing these things, uh, educating people in companies? And then, as you say, there's all sorts of benefits in there in terms of the, the novated leasing um, right through to, did you know that the insurance policy within your superannuation means that you can make these claims, uh, as you say, at, at, at no risk um, and at the same time do it the right way. Otherwise, it's it, it it's going to be taxed and they will lose 20 or 30% or more of of the actual amount that's coming to you. Is that right? That's It's, it's up to 22% on a TPD claim if you oh. cash it in before your retirement age. Um, 
And so if it's a terminal illness, it's a death cover paid out in advance, of course, which means there's no tax. So it's just understanding how the system works. Yeah. And yeah. and and just um yeah, and 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 just educating people that are not well, uh physically or mentally, they're not well. Mm. Uh, TPD means that all your medical advisors will say you are totally and permanently disabled and will stay that way forever. So the mental state for these poor people is fairly significant. Um, uh, and at the moment, they're just lambs to the slaughter if they try and do it themselves. Mm. Um, and because uh, it's just mountains and mountains of paperwork and very difficult. So we do all the paperwork. And, well, there's uh, no and doubt. Not... Again, we talk about financial literacy. There's a literacy in dealing with insurance companies, just as there is a literacy yeah. in dealing with banks. Um, yeah. And and invariably, insurance companies are not in the business of just throwing money away easily. So they're going to make people jump through hoops um, yes. to qualify. And and if you don't know how to navigate that maze, um, you're going to hit a lot of walls. And you know, either go down the wrong path and claim the the wrong thing, as you say, or 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 just give up because it's all or too give hard. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why there's probably forty thousand minimum TPD claims should be paid out in Australia every year. And there's only about seventeen thousand. Goodness gracious! Like it's just a massive area that uh, we, yeah. we're we're looking forward to spending more time working in that area. Yeah. Um. There, and it's just re spreading our network and our reputation amongst our growing community is really the only way to do it. Uh, because if you're going to spend thirty thousand dollars a month on advertising, you've got to charge a fortune in the fees, and that's there's nothing right about any of that. So yes, yeah, yeah, yep. amazing, amazing, mate. You're doing great work. So, talking of that, um, what does the future hold for Jeff Bowman, and what does the future hold for Wealth by Design? What's the next step for you? Yeah, great question. Um, I, I had a, uh, I'm having a, in discussions with an individual who's about 15, 16 years younger than me, which is perfect, perfect uh, age gap, um, who is a highly uh, accomplished CEO uh, of a couple of businesses here in Perth, but wants it, wants, is doing contract work at the moment and uh, will probably come in and join me um, mm. and help help do a lot of the heavy lifting uh, it'll mean I'll I'll spend less time uh, uh, on day to day, and there'll be a there'll be a, a a great succession plan model developed there, which will continue on for this particular person for a long time to come. I would hope, brilliant, uh, brilliant. because the the fundamentals of this business is is that it's a uh, it's it covers helping people with a whole range of services in a consultancy type way with with very specific um, experience in, in in key areas that we've developed over the years. So it's a bit of an oddball consultancy business in a sense mm. because the areas that we're working in are quite specific and require a fair bit of study and knowledge. Um, but that's the ultimate plan, to develop it into a fully-blown national consultancy business with a whole range of services and... and, uh, and uh, It'll be set up to be sold, or to be, or for me to be bought out. Brilliant. In fact, one of one of my, one of my previous one of my previous uh, podcast guests, John Denton, talked about exit with equity. Exit with equity. Having that plan. A bit again, coming back to if you fail to plan financially, then you will fail fi financially. And here, the same thing with the business. Clear, you've got a plan to exit. Exit with equity, uh, but at the same time build something of substance that's that's making a difference and really being being of value to people, particularly overcoming this financial literacy issue. Yeah, yeah, and it's just not it's just not in Australia. I mean, I went and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro a few years ago with some mates, um, and um, and I've I spent some some money educating. Uh, well, I educated my porter and a couple of others, um, just get their knowledge base up at the Nairobi. Um, sort of university, they call it a university, it's more like a TAFE. Mm. Um, but these these kids got, you know, qualifications, two meals a day, you know, a bed, a roof, and and a, a year 
uh, where they came out with two two qualifications, one with uh, mountain climbing, the other with safari um, mm. tours, the tap into the tourist industry. And, um, you know, they get, they get paid $10 US a day and they work 12 to 14 hours a day. Mm. Uh, and they still manage to make a living. Um, but with those qualifications, only cost, only, they cost about 1,000 US per person. So it's a little bit of our money goes a long way for these people because, um, you know, with those qualifications, they've got a 40% pay rise. Wow. And you can now, and can now, um, uh, you know, go and buy a house. Might have an wow. earthen floor, they can buy a house. And uh, this is in Tanzania and Arusha and places like that. And so uh, with what, one of the three things, with the digital the digital wealth platform that we are supporters of, um, uh, because of the democratization of money through that digital, this whole new digital Web3 world, mm -hmm. um, you can now comfortably transfer a Bitcoin to these guys, right? Because it goes to eight eight zeros after the decimal point, and so so if you've got on your phone, these these are Tanzanian kids, they're all Facebook mates of mine now, so I really keep in contact with them. It's great, but you know they are they might have twenty five dollars uh, Aussie of value of Bitcoin on their phones, and they will go and trade that with pineapples at the at the at the stores and things like that, mm. and so. So they, I'm hopeful that that what's happening in the digital space uh, will be um, will help these guys get a bit of a lift up in these impoverished countries, mm -hmm. because uh, they can play on a, on an international playing field despite the fact that they're only earning fourteen dollars a day in That's their incredible. jobs. Wow. So yeah, so many many opportunities will develop for the for the poorer countries through. What's happening in the digital asset world, Mike? Fantastic, mate. Not only not only making a difference in Australia, but in other places as well. So, uh, as we move to a close, Jeff, is there anything I haven't asked you or topics you'd like to cover before we we, we move into the home straight? Look, no, I don't think so, Lee. I mean, um, I've covered a fair bit of territory. Um, the uh, we've covered the three core areas. We've covered the the sort of the bridging consultancy service that we offer for people that are not too sure whether they could should go and see a financial advisor or not. Yeah, that's a, that's a really important part of what we do. It's the bridging knowledge gap. It only takes two and a half hours. Yes, um, but you can't open up a you can't open up an account with a financial advisor for under say five thousand dollars minimum now. Mm. But the statements of advice document, the first meeting is between five to 20,000. Like it's outrageous, not even tax deductible. Wow. And so a lot of people are going, my God, you know, I think I should need a financial advisor, but I'm not too sure whether I can afford it. I don't want to go to one where I've spent my five grand and it's a waste. Mm. I think that's a very important part of what we do. Yes. Um, it's the stepping stone to all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, no, no. I think uh, we've covered we've covered enough today. Brilliant, mate. So, in terms of action points, of course, there's three key tips or tools. Clearly, as you say, one of the first things would be touch base with you guys and have a two hour discussion around their their as you say their goals, their goals and objectives, and their cash flow and their future. Would yeah. that be the first? Yeah. What would be yeah, two other that, things? You, what do you a, recommend? That's a small do? cost entry. I mean, we charge seven hundred dollars for that. Right. Okay. Yeah. So seven hundred and seventy dollars for two two and a half hours. Yeah, which is a lot uh, of value. Then is it is an enormous amount of value, mm. um, and and um, and from there, you know, you can, with my experience and knowledge on, on what's going on, you can generally steer them in the right direction, and just give them that little bit of extra confidence to, to maybe just even validate their own their own strategy, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're reminding me, you're saying you like going up Mount Kilimanjaro. Best go up Mount Kilimanjaro with a guide than on your own. And this is the, if you're talking about the financial Mount Kilimanjaro, best go up with a guide who's been there before you or been up there a hundred times before you to help you make sure you don't go down the wrong path, which is very easy to do. Um, what would be a couple of other tips you'd give people, action points you think people should take in terms of their 
their wealth by design? Um, apart from coming and seeing us and having a having a chat or organising a Zoom call, um, they, they need to have a have a look at their cash flows. Right, they actually need to have a look at their cash flows and work out whether they're running a loss or not. I mean, the uh, the debt levels for Australians is outrageous. Mm. You know, um, uh, you know when we were buying houses, Lee, thirty years ago, two times salary might be equal your debt in your home. Might mm. have been a twenty thousand dollar home, but it doesn't matter. It's all relative. Uh, but now, um, you know, it's five times. Yeah. And so, so for the younger generation, with we've got the housing issue, um, it's really critical that they get the fundamentals clear in their heads to start with. They've got to understand mm. how compound interest works. They don't mm. know how compound works. Go and Google it. Because mm. um, the younger ones, although they think they've put out of the property market, um, most of them are not they can actually get into it uh, and work their way through, but they've got to get hold of their spending and understand spending. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Understand, uh, just understand whether they're running a cash flow deficit at the moment. If they've got a credit card, they're probably running a cash flow deficit because the extra expenditure is sitting on the credit card if it's hardcore debt. Right. Wow. So that's a wow. good start. <laughs> yeah, mate, look, there's so much. Of you keep coming back to the bridging this knowledge gap. And I, I can see there is unfinished business because while there's still a lack of financial literacy, um, there are there are people that don't even know what the sniff test is, that, as you say, ignorance and greed um, and deception, combine those two, ignorance and greed, financial illiteracy with p p deception. Boy, oh, boy, there's uh, plenty to be done. Uh, Jeff, it's been fantastic talking to you, mate. And I look forward to how performance development consultants, we can work together uh, that, so that you guys become our go-to people when it comes to financial literacy and, and wealth by design. Well, you certainly, you've, you've already proved that, Lee, because the chap that you introduced me to, to completely re redesign all of our CRM back office. Wow. Is a, is a genius. We love him. Right. right. So Brilliant. thanks for introducing us to, uh, to Aidan. Oh, that's pretty much. Well, he's he's certainly part of our lead generation and marketing team. You know, mate. As you as you know, one of the secrets to success is to surround yourself with people far smarter than you are. I think yeah, that's right. that's what I'm looking to do with uh, performance development consultants to get the best, the smartest people in their area. Because I said, you know, if you're a chief exec or a managing director or you're self employed, you're sitting there going, mate, my cash flow should be better, my results should be better, my sales should be better. I'm, I'm losing sleep over this. Who do I call? I say, give us a call, PDC, and then we'll put you in touch with the right people. Yeah. So, mate, thank you so much for your time today, and I look forward to us uh, continuing to evolve because there's plenty of unfinished business for me as well. Fantastic, Lee. I really appreciate your time and uh, the opportunity to have our today session today. And uh, I know we are. I know we can work more closely together and get some real value, B right, mutual mate. benefit all around. Thanks, mate. I'll see you very soon. All the best. Cheerio. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.